Hello everyone, this is Ashish. Welcome back to Talk4712 and today we are going to talk about something extremely important for everyone who is preparing for competitive examination in a MCQ fashion or let us just say non-subjective type examination where you do not have to write paragraphs of answer but you have to just give an answer in a number or selecting one of the given options. Now based on my experience when I was appearing in a lot of competitive examination like I've literally appeared in dozens of them for three years I've learned few tips and tricks that I would like to share with you guys now the first part of this video will be focused towards what should be your approach towards numerical solving in this examination because all of these examination has one factor that is time you have to take care of that if you get a question and you get 10 days anyone can solve it but time factor comes into the picture and at the same time it is competitive a lot of these examinations are going to punish you with negative marks so accuracy comes into the picture and you cannot really let that go very low so we are going to talk about what should be the approach of numerical solving and in the second half, we are going to talk about what to do if while practicing, you are not able to solve a particular question. What should you do? Should you leave it or if you're supposed to give it time, then how long should you give time to it? So what should be your general approach? See, it is all the matter of where you give higher speed and where you give lower speed. Now, what happens is because everybody knows that these examination will be having time factors so what they do is that they in a hurry read the question and just pick the numerical values from one point to another point they just write the numerical values and they think about what should be the formula that i should be using and then they do it now 70 to 80 percent of the time it will work this method will work and definitely it saves time but those 20% of the time where it does not work and where the question was actually trying to check your concept, those 20% of the marks actually or the 20% of the cases creates the difference from the ones who get selected and ones who don't. So that is why it is important for you to go through the questions line by line. Later on, when you're solving the question, and everything is set you can increase the pace but this is the time where you should read each and every word of the question each and every word will be giving you some hint or the other based on which you'll be able to solve the question not reading those or skipping some, through some of those is like solving a question with half of the tools so one by one every line i'm going to read and most importantly the last line where it is actually asked what you need to give as an answer you should always read it twice like in what unit it is and exactly what it is asking that is extremely important next part is the elemental formula in most of the cases of sciences and engineering you'll be needing a formula to get an answer so you put that formula over there for safety just in case if you directly put the values there can be some mistake that's where we get the silly mistake and the next step also you do carefully that is putting the values in that formula and then you increase the pace because you are going to find out with experience over time that you generally make the mistake in these part like finding out what is the actual question writing down the formula and putting the values once you have put the values all you have to do is calculation and you don't generally make mistakes over there. Generally, people make mistakes like you have missed some part of the formula or you missed some part of the question. So you understand where you have to increase the pace. For example, let us say you read the question very fast and then you wrote any formula and then you got stuck. And because of that, you found, oh, I made a mistake over there. Then you go back and change. Then actually you're wasting more time and you're wasting a lot of or losing a lot of confidence as well. So what you should be doing is understand where to increase pace. So what you should be doing is like going slowly and then rapidly increase pace, which is the solving part. If you have had sufficient practice, you will not be making a mistake over there. So in the second part, we will be discussing what to do if during your practice time, you're not able to solve a particular question. Now, obviously a numerical based examination will require a lot of practice and a lot of you guys are smart enough to understand that. And that is why a lot of you guys are practicing a lot. But the main contrast happens or the biggest shock that happens is when you have studied a concept and you get into numerical solving practice part and you are unable to solve a lot of questions. 
The reason for that is that there's a difference between understanding the concept and applying it in your numericals. And that's what you need to realize. And above all, accept it. Everybody faces this. The first time I gave a test series, out of 100 marks, I got 9 marks. It's because so far I've understood the concept, I've practiced, but I do not know how to apply it in test series. So over time, you have to get used to whatever you're doing. You have understood the concept, but you have to get used to solving the questions as well. In most of the situations, the first time you start solving questions of a particular topic, what you have studied very well, you will not be able to solve like more than 50% of the questions. That is very natural. What is wrong is that you getting demotivated because of that and reading the same concept again and again, thinking that it will make things better for you. What happens is that you're getting better at concept again, but you're never actually getting better at applying that concept. And thus, you have to keep at it. You have to keep solving more and more questions. And over time, you are going to become better and trained in solving more questions as well. Now, let's get to the point. How much time am I supposed to invest if I'm not able to solve a particular question? I'll say a thumb rule would be 15 to 20 minutes initially. You've just started solving questions would be good for you. So you might be wondering that in an examination, I have to solve a question in like three minutes or one minute. How can I invest 15 minutes? Now, obviously, if you were that good, why are you preparing directly get into the examination hall and crack it? So what we are trying to do is improve. And by improving, we reduce the time. So initially, the time would be high. But the more you practice, the time will shorten. And ultimately, in six months or one year, whenever you're planning to give the examination, that time will be what you desire to be solving the questions on spot in the examination hall. That is the end goal. But the process you'll have to understand as well. Understand the idea. The idea is that you should be first good at solving that problem. So you should be conceptually sound so that you are able to tackle that question. And over time, once that is clear and sorted, you are going to reduce the time because all that is going to happen is that with more practice, you are going to be able to tackle quicker. But if you do not do that and all of a sudden jump into, I have to do it fast, fast, fast. I'm solving it for the first time, but I still want to solve it in one minute. Then you never actually get into the concept part and the application part. What you get at is how to solve this particular question. I'll memorize it. And that is the semester examination kind of idea that most people have. So you have to gradually reduce it. That is the objective. And some people will keep on doing the one thing that I talked about, like I just want to focus on solving this in one minute or three minutes and I'll not focus on applying and improving and reducing my time. They keep on doing this for like six months and one year and that's why they don't really find improvements. Now, one exception I want to mention about the first point that we mentioned some of the questions you will not be able to write down the formulas a very good example would be engineering services examination or isro examination or a lot of psu examination where you get less than like one minute time to solve a particular question in those cases you won't be able to write down the formula then the only solution is having higher practice and do it fast but then again to reach that level you have to do maybe putting a formula and then doing it and then over time the formula is so well memorized that you don't need it you have to pay extra care and attention and obviously concentration when you're solving that question but in gate examination you can certainly do it and since gate examination has this old habit of tricking its candidates so you have to do it sometimes it will seem useless but a lot of times it will be saving a lot of your marks. And see you next time. If you have any doubts, please put it down in the comment section. Maybe it will be turned into a video if it gets a lot of likes. Or otherwise, I'm going to be answering your questions anyways. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Till then, bye.